Hi everybody, Ryan here from Cold Average Supply. We're kind of in our new studio here, so pardon us as we get things adjusted. The first video that we're going to make here is going to be about the KDEX mount. The KDEX mount has two big features that we're going to go over today and how to use them. First off is going to be the height adjustment in the rear. On the rear, you're going to have these holes over here. And this plate can use a Phillips screwdriver to be dismounted and you can change the height of the plate slightly giving you different ranges of adjustment for the vertical up and down travel. Now, why is this important? For some goggles, such as any 31 base goggle like this 1431 here, you can see how tall the bridge is. I'm gonna bring out the normal fixed fridge goggle just to illustrate the example. This is an LLI A turnus, and you can see that height in the bridge can sometimes make it, depending on your head setup and your helmet, of course, can sometimes make it so even if the mount is adjusted all the way up, the goggle can either ride a bit low or it's just on your eye and if your helmet gets shifted, there's no leeway for that. Some of us also like to run our goggles slightly higher and kind of tilt it up. So we're aimed down in, the goggles come into position, and when you are kind of just looking around, you can see underneath the goggle and you can still see a full image of the tubes and you can get a good idea of what's going on around you in terms of ambient lighting conditions. The other thing that is extremely unique to the KDEX mount is going to be on the other side, which is this dovetail shoe interface over here. What this dovetail shoe interface over here has is that it has an adjustable dovetail system. A lot of people don't know how to use this, so we're gonna get into how to adjust the dovetail. Now, why might you want to adjust the dovetail? Surprisingly, in the night vision world, not everything is super standard. To ensure the most optimum fit, having an adjustable dovetail can be a great thing. Now, for us as a vendor, obviously it's a Really nice thing to have because we're playing around with a bunch of devices. But for you as the buyer, there could be a lot of housings out there, a lot of options if you want to upgrade or change housings, or if you're running a PVS-14, you want to change your arms or your mounts. Having that flexibility in your mounting systems can really increase the longevity of your device and the security of it. Having an improperly adjusted dovetail can lead to a few things. So if it's too tight, you might have to really force or yam the goggle on to get it to fit. I'm going to show you this example with a Lindu Quan, as you can see, it has these two tabs on the top that kind of prevent it from locking in unless I really force it in. Uh, on the flip side, you can have a device that's too loose. So for example, this has a little bit of play on this Noise Fighters AX14J arm inside this Wilcox mount. It's not a big issue in terms of use. However, if you're moving around a lot, the eyeboff can start to shift a bit, which is a bit annoying. As this dovetail shifts around in the shoe, it causes wear on the dovetail, premature wear to the rear part where it locks in and wear to the fins of the dovetail uh, where it interfaces with the female side. So the first form of adjustment we're gonna get into is going to be adjusting the height of the mount and the plate on the rear. So this plate on the rear is removable via these two screws. I just have a multi-tool here, but you can use any standard Phillips screwdriver. Of course, you wanna make sure that it fits properly in here. If it's too loose or too tight uh, with the screwdriver head, uh, don't use it. You obviously don't want to strip the screws. Now, these screws might be very, very tight when you first get the mount. However, I've already kind of loosened them, so they're not too bad. You might hear a little squeak when you tear them apart. That's not a big thing where the mount breaking, they're just tightened on there with quite a bit of friction from the factory. All right, so these two screws obviously don't lose them. Now it's just gonna come apart like this, very simple. You'll notice here, there's these six holes. Now these holes correspond to the height of the plate on the back, changing the default position of the mount. And then over here, there are also six holes. However, you only really need to worry about these two. These two are just spare screws. This and this over here are gonna be the holes that you use to adjust your mount. So what you're gonna do is as you can see, this is pretty simple. You can use either the top ones to adjust it or you can use the bottom ones. It doesn't really matter. It just depends on what you need. So for this one, I found the mount was a bit too high, so we're gonna adjust it down lower, which is gonna be lining these two up. We're gonna take these screws and we're going to put them in these bottom holes over here. You can put them in the top, like I said, if you need to, and we're just gonna move them to the bottom over here. Now, what I like to do first when I screw anything together is I like to go backwards and here it index, that way I don't strip it and then screw them in. Don't tighten them all the way just yet. You just want them to be in. And if the mount has a little play, we're gonna fix that in a bit. I'm gonna show you how. If you feel the screws cross-threading or not indexing, back it up and try again. Okay, cool. So these are in, but there's still a bit of wobble here. 
But the reason why there's a bit of wobble is because I want to make sure this is level. So if you just tighten them independently right now, it could be a little crooked out of the way. This way or that way. What I recommend doing is before you kind of finalize the tightening of it, you kind of want to push it all the way to the down, uh, all the way down, or you want to push it all the way up so that way it kind of bottoms out or tops out on the posts of these two screws and it's level. Once it's done, you compare this line over here to that line. And once that's leveled, you can take your screwdriver and gently tighten these screws to tension. Once it's there, you can give this a wobble, make sure it's not wobbling. And now this mount is ready to go. So now we're going to do the dovetail adjustment. What I've used is just an AX14 noise fighter arm. These are fantastic. I just took the PVS14 off of this one so that we can use it as an example. What you're also going to need is two very specific hex keys. You're going to need a 2mm hex key and a 1.27mm hex key. You might find imperial keys that work. I don't recommend it just because these are very small screws and they have a higher chance of stripping. Um, or they have a higher chance of damaging your head skis, so just stick with the metric screws. So this is the dovetail of the device. As you can see, it's like a normal dovetail to groove here, and it has this retaining pin over here that scoops into the rear part of the dovetail so that it doesn't move out. Now, as you can imagine, this one is very loose right now because I've loosened it up all the way. So you have a huge amount of movement between the dovetail and the device, right? Now we're going to get into how this dovetail works. Now as you can see over here, this is the dovetail and this is the retaining tab. And this is the side that actually adjusts. These are two little locking hex keys over here, hex screws, sorry. And they need to be loosened up so that the dovetail can move up and down on this little track. There's also, here it's very small, but it's a little worm drive. Now this worm drive, what it does is it pushes the dovetail forwards and kind of rearwards, but not so much rearwards. Going to go into that a bit. And that's how you adjust this dovetail so that the shape of this tightens or loosens depending on what you need. Another key component is this screw over here. Now this screw simply locks the dovetail in place so it can't go past its maximum position. I actually recommend taking this screw out so that way you have a little bit more leeway and you can kind of remove little elements like a little bit of the wobble here or there so that way you can actually get a really tight into the dovetail. This is also a 2 mil screw. This will be quite a tight little screw. If you can't get it out, don't worry. You can still do this without getting this out. But I just find it a lot easier when you have the shoe independent from the entire mount. Now don't lose that. Although if you do, there are spares on the rear, but don't lose that. And when you pull it out, the dovetail will slide out all the way. This is also really great if you have any dirt in here, you can clean it out and brush it out so that way it locks properly. We're going to put this to the side for now. Now for a dovetail that's too loose, it's very, very simple. All you do is you take this and you loosen these two screws over here just a bit. So that way this moves around slightly. You can see it's a little, it's a little wobbly now. Then all you're going to do is you're going to put your device in like so until it locks like that. And it's going to be very wobbly because it's not tight and it's already loose to begin with. Now you're going to take your 1.27 millimeter hex key and you're going to put it in this little hole over here. And that's where the worm drive sits, right? And you can see this. It's going to start turning. Let's see it. It's pushing it forward and that's creating a tighter fit between the dovetail and the device. I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty good. Now, before you finalize everything, you want to tighten these screws down because these can really change the position of the dovetail as well. This will lock it in place. All right, now we're going to try this on and it locks really nice. And there's absolutely zero wobble. If you find that it has a little bit of wobble, what you can do is you can back out all these screws out and try again. Now loosening it is a bit of a different affair. What's kind of interesting about this system is that the grub screw only really works one way and has to push it out. If you want to loosen it, you have to kind of do both things. You have to unscrew the retaining screws over here and then loosen this grub screw. Now put it on. And that's pretty perfect. So for me, I like it really tight. So I just like having that perfect amount of pressure. And now as you can see the dovetail has zero wobble 
and you've just eliminated that aspect of your nod from wobbling. Once that's finished, just take the shoe, take your mount and put it back on the rails. Cool, like so. Then what you're gonna do is you take this grub screw, which hopefully didn't lose, and you're gonna put it back onto the mount over here. And there you go. You can give this a bit of a test. The rail doesn't fly off, has full range of adjustments, and best of all, it locks in beautifully and there's absolutely no wobble with that device. That's gonna be pretty much it for this video, guys. We didn't see a video online for this, so we thought we'd make one. We hope to catch on the next one. For more tutorials, videos, overviews, and product stuff, be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you very soon. Thank you, and stay safe out there. Have fun with these things.